gentlemen, I am Laura Goodwin and you're watching Love X Annie. So I'm here for probably not long awaited Romeo and Juliet Act 1 scene 4 and 5. Now, when I watched back my other video I realised I rambled like an absolute tit and gave you no help at all. So I have, with the help of No Fear Shakespeare, this isn't advertised, it's just, I use No Fear Shakespeare, it's so good, Spartan Rose. I'm going to link it down below for you guys. Um, I was able to give you a plot summary and, yeah, add in some more opinions. So let's get on to it. So, scene four, enter Mercutio. Mercutio is Romeo's best friend and he is basically Switzerland. He is a neutral between the Romeo, the Romeos, the Montagues and the Capulets. So, they are all together um, in masks and they're heading to Capulet's party and they're trying to think of an excuse of how to get in. By the way, at this point, Romeo is still melancholy. When he refuses to dance... Give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. Mercutio starts to take the mick out of him, but Romeo is having none of it and basically says that he has a sinking feeling this is not going to end well and he's right. At the party he may meet the love of his life but it is also the beginning of the end. After Mercutio talks of his dream, the big Queen Mab speech, um, and Romeo calms him down, Romeo states his fears for tonight which also foreshadow events to come and also brings us back to the theme of fate which is a very big I said in I think I said it in the first video as well it's a humongous running theme throughout the play fate that fate will allow this I fear too early for my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night revels and expire the terms of a despised life closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death but he that hath that steerage of my course direct my sail on lusty gentlemen which basically means i'm worried that we will get there too early I have a feeling this part tonight is going to be the start of something bad and it's going to end up with my death. But what will be, will be, and onward, lover boys. And that is basically how scene four ends. Now we are on to scene five, which is the end of act one. And finally, the moment we have all been waiting for, boy meets girl. So this is a scene obviously where Romeo and Juliet meet but first of all Romeo spies Juliet from across the room and he asks a servant who she is but this servant has no clue so suddenly Romeo is just transfixed and it's all Rosalind who and he declares he's never been in love till this moment which shows us that what he feels for Rosalind was just lust like I said in the first video. But Tibble hears Romeo's voice and recognises it and asks for his sword to kill him but Capulet tells him off as he knows Romeo is well regarded in Verona and will not have him harmed at his feast. So question for you, does that not get you thinking that somewhere in Capulet's mind he might actually have been alright with Romeo and Juliet being together if he doesn't want Romeo harmed and he thinks Romeo's well regarded in the, the whole of Verona. So just a little point to thing on it. Doesn't what didn't come to me till last night and I realised that I thought, oh, there you go. Anyway, this is the point where Tybalt decides he will not let Romeo get away with being at his family's party uninvited. So Romeo and Juliet meet the first thing Romeo does is touch her hand. Their first dialogue, which I'm not going to go into, is basically compares Juliet to a saint and Romeo to a pilgrim. And basically Romeo says that his sin resides on his lips. And the only way to get rid of this sin is for Juliet to kiss him. Smoothie. Anyway, she does, but logically she realises that his sin is now on her lips so they have to kiss again to get rid of the sin I mean I mean that's cute but I'm like 
come on, like Romeo, if a guy came up to me and said, you're a saint, I'm a pilgrim, and my kiss is on my lips, you're gonna have to kiss me. Like, I can understand why she's kind of fell for that, because she is 13. We have to remember this, she is literally 13, and, or no, she's 12. She's 12 or she's 13, I can't remember what she is. And Romeo's like 16, so he has this kind of smooth thing, and she's just like, oh my god, this boy is really hot, yeah, of course. Anyway, then the nurse comes in and cock blocks, as per usual, are we even surprised? She also reveals that Juliet is a Capulet to Romeo and he is devastated. But Juliet also realises that she loves Romeo and basically says that if Romeo is married, she may die. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. <sighs> Nurse then breaks the news to Juliet that Romeo is in fact a Montague and of course the girl is heartbroken leading to one of the most famous lines in the play. My only love sprung from my only hate too early seen unknown and known too late Proteus birth of lover is to me that I must have a loathed enemy. That is also a rhyming couplet just to let you know that is a rhyming couplet and I got really excited when I actually kind of realised that but that basically means the only man I love is the son of the only man I hate I saw him too early without knowing who he was and I found out who he was too late love is a monster for making me fall in love with my worst enemy and that is it for act one um, join me next month for Act 2, Prologue, which is basically scene 1 to scene 3, and we will see where our story takes us. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this layout better than the one I did before. It was more structured, I think, hopefully, and I have my quotes and everything, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Join me on Monday for my Much Ado About Nothing playlist. I'll see you then. Bye!